Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates Ace Duck from Super 7. We are continuing our look at the sixth wave of TMNT Ultimates action figures. Ace Duck, of course, a classic one from the vintage toy line uh, that I was pretty excited to see get updated for this line. Specifically for this head right here, I cannot believe we got this particular head sculpt, but we'll look closer at it when we get it out of the packaging. Of course, this is the same style window box that we've had for all the figures in the Ultimates line. We got a bio on the back for the aerodynamic adventurer known as Ace Duck. And of course, that window displays lots of accessories here. It looks like we got alternate jacket, we got guns, we got the wings, we got alternate head, we got the removable hat, we got the egg bombs. I have one loose wing floating around in my packaging for some reason. Look at that, just kind of floating around back there. So it must have just fell out of the tray inside. But why don't we go ahead and just rip this guy open anyway? Let's get him pulled out of the box and we will get a closer look at the figure. All right, we've got our Ace Duck outside of the packaging. If I bring in the tape measure, you can see that he stands just shy of six inches tall. Uh, so he actually feels a little smaller than even the turtles. He's got a bit of a shortness to him and he's thinner, um, but very cool looking. I do like the overall look with him here, uh, but I got a lot to talk about with this guy. There's a lot going on here. First thing I want to talk about are the colors here, the paint deco. So first things first, paint deco is very clean. It looks really nice. And I will say that the bright yellow of Ace Duck looks really good. And I don't know if it's coming across well on camera, but there is some nice shading in here. So there are some good levels of different colors of yellow that's worked into the sculpt here, which really makes all the sculpted details of the feathers look really, really nice. Um, the bomber jacket that he's wearing and his hat feel like they are too light brown for me. And you'll definitely see that later on when we compare them to the other Ace Duck action figures. I definitely think it should be a much darker brown. The reason that this really stands out to me is this light brown and yellow combo almost blends together a little too much, making his overall sculpt feel a bit soft. And it's weird because the sculpt isn't soft, but because of all of those very yellowy colors, like this light brown just kind of blends in with that yellow a little too much. See, the blue is a nice stark contrast, and that really stands out. But this light brown just kind of blends together with the yellows, and it does sort of soften his overall appearance. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think when we compare him to the other Ace Duck figures later in this video, you're really going to see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I love the look of this guy. I think he looks fantastic. Uh, we can remove the hat up here, which gives us a much better look at Ace Duck's head, which is inspired by the vintage toy. You can see he's got a teeth gritting smile. I actually love the teeth. They're bright white and they look really cool. Bright white cartoony looking eyes there. Uh, really cool figure. Uh, overall as far as the sculpt goes and the hat is really interesting because the way this works There's no peg or anything, but you can see the inside of the hat is molded to fit his hair or his feathers on top of his head and that actually works pretty well you can see it clips on there uh pretty sturdy however the brim of the hat does cover the eyes quite a bit now i think that's just the way these hats are meant to be worn and even the vintage figure kind of covers his eyes like that when he's wearing the hat uh, but it is worth noting that he, he hides his eyes really well especially since he can't really lift his head up above this height right here you're almost really not going to see his eyes too well unless you're looking at him from down below the hat really hides the eyes so I want to turn around and talk about the wings and the tail because there's some really interesting stuff going on here, uh, which allows you to remove the wings and the tail for alternate looks for a stuck because he has been uh, displayed in the past in various forms of media, either with or without the wings. So you've got the two different modes of display here. So these are removable. What I will say about these wings, while they are fully articulated, they're on hinge joints there. They fall out of these peg holes so incredibly easy. Uh, I will say right off the bat, this is the only instance I really have of kind of weaker joints on this figure. So we'll talk about that more with articulation. But these pegs, I don't know. It's like they never really feel like they clip in all the way. Uh, even though I have definitely inserted that peg all the way into the slot, it never really clips in. And it's so easy 
just to knock these wings off. Uh, it gets incredibly frustrating, especially when you're trying to pose them around and uh, put on some of the other accessories that you have. You're going to constantly knock the wings and the tail feather off. Uh, which is just a bit unfortunate. I really would have liked to see these a bit tighter. Like those pegs, I don't know if they should be longer or uh, maybe a little thicker, uh, but they're just, I don't know, they're not working too well. And again, I'm trying to put, make sure that I'm like clipping them in place, but they never really feel like they lock in. They just kind of feel like they're floating there and it's real easy to knock these out. So it is unfortunate. Once you get them in, they don't droop or anything. They seem to stay fine. So they're only really falling out when you're messing around with them, posing them. It's real easy to bump them off. The tail feather attaches to there's a little slot you can see underneath his jacket there this is a soft softer plastic jacket so you can see there's a peg there so it actually kind of attaches like up on his lower back so not actually on his butt uh, just his lower back there kind of coming out from underneath the jacket and it fits a little more sturdy than the wings do so the reason that this is all really interesting is because he comes with an alternate version of the jacket that doesn't have the holes in it for the wings. So if you want to display them without these, it's actually very easy to do. In fact, we're going to go ahead and just remove the head and the hands. Uh, as you guys know, heads on a ball joint, you can swap out the hands. This just makes it a little bit easier so we can pull the jacket off of the arms here and in its place, if you would like to, you can actually swap on the other jacket. It fits over just like that. And hey, look, now we've got him uh, where his back is totally covered and you don't see those wing holes anymore. That's a really nice touch. It's definitely one of those extra things that they didn't have to do, uh, especially since not many of us are even going to see the back of the figure when he's up on our shelf, right? But it's still cool that we've got the option to display him that way. You got the Turtles logo on his back, which I do like quite a bit. All right, so we talked about the wings and my gripes with those, but let's go over the rest of the articulation. And let's start with the patented Pixel Dan Super 7 figure wiggle. Look at that. He's got nice tight joints at the hips. The legs are not wiggling around. Good, sturdy articulation on this guy. I am so happy that this particular wave of Ninja Turtles Ultimates seems to have fixed those wobbly joints. Fingers crossed that sticks that way across the board. So ball joint at the head, as I showed you, it's removable. It can move all the way around, look left and right. Joints at the shoulders allow the arms to go upwards, forwards, backwards, swivel at the bicep, a single joint at the elbow, as well as a swivel at the elbow. Uh, the hands are just on these little pegs. They also kind of pop out pretty easy, but they're not falling out or anything. So you could swivel those and you got the hinge joints there. Uh, otherwise, we got a joint at the waist that actually allows them to roll around, move left and right. You got the uh, ball-like hinges there at the thigh, so legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, swivel, single joint at the knee, swivel at the knee, and then his giant duck feet, you do have the nice hinge joints there to move them forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. So articulation, pretty nice on this guy, feels good and solid, I'm able to pose him, he stands fine, he's not collapsing because those joints in his hips and his knees are very good on this particular figure. And that, my friends, is going to bring us to all of the accessories, the other accessories that Ace Duck comes with. Uh, first of all, he does include this very interesting sprue with the unpainted weapons. And one of the reasons I say interesting is because it's designed to look like plane wheels. And that's kind of cool. You don't have these plane wheels anywhere else. And I think that's just like their unique way of designing the sprue for a stuck. But otherwise we've got the patented egg bombs, the uh, bandolier for those and his little pistol, which is what the vintage figure came with. But we've got more than that um, for the painted weapons here. So first of all, we do have the bandolier with the egg bombs. It comes with four egg bombs for each slot, but you also get two extra egg bombs uh, I always loved the egg bombs when I was a kid. One of my favorite accessories. Very easy to lose them. These new ones are probably no exception. But you can see they're painted. They actually are kind of like an eggshell white. They got the crack in them. Gray tops for the grenade pieces. This bandolier is very hard to attach to them. Much like the vintage figure. You kind of are supposed to put it around his waist there. But you got to find the right way so that it stays. And if you're trying to put it on over the wings, it is even more difficult because you're going to run into those problems. 
problems uh, where the wings are getting knocked off like I showed you earlier. But it's similar to the Vintage where there's like a little peg and you just kind of stretch it around and put it through one of the slots there. But it is cool. Once you get it on there, I always loved this accessory, like I said, on the Vintage toy. We also have a slew of interchangeable hands, like so many interchangeable hands. So first of all, he does come with two pairs of gripping hands uh, and two pairs of gripping hands that have trigger fingers. So that's four total gripping hands. Uh, we have two closed fists. We have two wide open hands, like with the fingers closed. And then we have two hands with the fingers spread open. So tons of tons of hands so you got lots of different options for swapping those out putting them back on there mixing them up with some of the different accessories which of course includes his pistol like we had on the vintage toy uh, and this one is great specifically for the hands with the trigger finger as you can see i'm kind of putting it on the hand before i plug it in i've just always found that easier but it's a nice weapon he holds it really really good in addition to that, he's got a new accessory in the form of a Tommy gun. Uh, and this thing is very cool looking. It definitely kind of fits his 1930s like bomber jacket wearing style that he's got going on there. I love it. Um, so again, this one works well with the trigger finger there. It does have two handles. I will say this. You can get him to hold it with both hands, but because of his articulation, because he only has the single joints at the elbows, it doesn't work very well. It looks kind of awkward. Uh, he's not holding the gun quite the way he should with two hands. So it's a cool accessory, but it is a bit unfortunate you can't get a really good pose out of him uh, holding it the way it's intended to be held. And that, my friends, is going to bring me to the final accessory, which... I am baffled, man. I cannot believe that Nickelodeon was just like, yep, that looks good. Uh, we've got this amazing alternate portrait, an extra head for Ace Duck there, where instead of the hat, he's wearing kind of like that classic pilot uh, helmet there. Uh, there's a little pair of goggles that you can put on over it that are made of a softer plastic, so you can put them up on his forehead. You could put them down over his eyes. It's a really great looking head sculpt. And yeah, he's totally got a cigar hanging out of his mouth. Unbelievable. I love this head sculpt. Uh, I love like how he's just got this meaner look on his face. He's got the teeth gritting around that cigar sticking out of the side of his bill. I love the ruffled eyebrows over his eyes, uh, especially when you got those goggles up on his forehead. Look, I don't want to say that smoking makes you look cool, but this head makes Ace Duck look real cool. I'm not even going to lie. I had so much fun posing him around and shooting photos of him with this particular portrait. It's my favorite part of this figure. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Let's go ahead and start by standing Ace Duck alongside the vintage action figure that he is inspired by. This is where I think you can really see what I was talking about with the colors. Uh, look at the bomber jacket on the vintage one and just look at how much more vibrant, how much more he stands out compared to this new one. Uh, it really does give the new one sort of a softer look overall. And I do want to go ahead and stand them alongside the NECA Toys release of Ace Duck, uh, which again, the colors there, I mean, they are so much more harsh with the harsh black lines and everything, but the darker colors of the jacket, I just think look a lot better. So that's definitely one of my gripes about the new one here. But there you go, my friends. That is a look at the brand new TMNT Ultimates Ace Duck action figure. Overall, I do like it. I have my nitpicks. I, I wish the colors were deeper, specifically on the jacket. I wish the wings locked in better, didn't fall off so easy. But there's things about them that I love. I think the accessories are really cool. I love the alternate head. I love that we're getting kind of some unique looks for these characters that we've not had in figure form before. And overall, very happy that the joints are fixed on this guy, which is a huge plus. So this wave is starting to ship from Super 7 right now. So if you pre-ordered it, you should have it very, very soon. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. And until next time.